The anime begins with our protagonist, Yuki, peacefully asleep. He is awoken in the most gentle manner by his childhood friend, Achai Sato. Upon realizing he's awake, Achai wastes no time in fixing his face after a rough night's sleep. Once she's done, Yuki heads off to school. On the way, they encounter Mifuyu, who notices the state of Yuki's face and sings him a soothing song to heal him. This causes Yuki to fall deeply in love with her, and he even confesses his feelings. However, his confession is swiftly rejected. It turns out that the three of them are part of a cooking club. Upon arriving, they meet Mori, who is rather shy, and Nozomi, a scientist who has created a robot that makes sweets, albeit still in the testing phase. Soon after, Baro arrives with chocolate bars for everyone. They start teasing our protagonist, and to go along with the game, he's urged to eat his bar. As it's a tasting session, everyone is supposed to try it, but just as it's about to be Yuki's turn, he starts paying close attention and knows what he has to do to maintain his masculinity. Chizato also wants a piece of the bar, but since she doesn't like chocolate, Yuki takes it from her. Grateful for the gesture, a teacher suddenly arrived to deliver some important news, but first, she wanted a sip. Priorities. After taking her drink, she informed everyone that the club could be disbanded. This was because the student council was mishandling the school's funds, and Satsuki had arrived to set things straight. Since some clubs had no real achievements, they were to be disbanded, and the leftover funds would be directed towards school programs. Obviously, our protagonist knew there was nothing he could do to protest, as his club had no achievements. But Nozomi was against it, as if their club closed, no one would taste her inventions. However, there was a glimmer of hope, as they still didn't know if Satsuki would become the student council president. But they knew she was very popular and pretty, not to mention well endowed, so there were high chances she would be chosen as the student president. To avoid sitting idly, they went to look for a presidential candidate. But upon finding one, they realized they had no hope. And truly none, as Yuki stumbled upon a girl Aomi. Seeing her ample bosom, he didn't mind, and apparently she was a scholarship student. However, in the rush to catch the bus, she had dropped her keys, and like a good protagonist, he held on to them. Nevertheless, they wouldn't give up, so they all decided to nominate themselves for the student council. And who better prepared psychologically than our protagonist? Obviously, he didn't want to but since the whole school was against him, he had no other option. After a few days, our protagonist was having a dream about Chisato. They had been engaged since childhood, but he didn't know what love was. However, she wanted to prove herself, and right as the real baby touched her melons. At first, Kira removed his hands from her, and Chisato started teasing him. Nevertheless, Yuki paid no attention to her because he was seeking a girl of his caliber. Besides, since it was Sunday, he wanted to sleep and to top it off, he informed her that he wouldn't go to the cooking club anymore and had no plans to run for student president. After a while, Chisato went to inform her club friends, while another student went to deliver Ayomi's keys to the school. On the way, she encountered some lovely girls and even ran into Satsuki. Apparently, she wasn't as bad as they had said, and they got along well. Moreover, when she mistakenly mispronounced our protagonist's name, he kindly corrected her, and she found him somewhat amusing. Hearing this, he felt flattered. Meanwhile, everyone in the club had already heard about Yuki's decision, and to prevent it, Aubrey tried calling him to cheer him up. She thought it wouldn't change his mind, but when she told him she was pregnant with his child, Yuki hung up instantly. He went to school to deliver Aomi's keys and happened to run into her. Recognizing her, he returned her keys, and since it was Sunday, Aomi was surprised to see him at school. She thanked him for everything he had done for her, but she had to go to work, and before leaving, she told him she would thank him properly later. Meanwhile, the cooking club was somewhat worried, all because they hadn't achieved anything. That's why Nozomi decided to focus on that aspect. She manufactured a mixing machine and put it to the test, but it was evident from all sides that it would be a disaster. Meanwhile, our protagonist was contemplating what to do with the cooking club when he suddenly stumbled. He thought it would be with another girl, but it turned out to be the security guards of the current student president. Since he was someone important, they had to protect him, and he already knew all about his cooking club. He knew that if he didn't do anything about it, his small club would disintegrate, so he encouraged him to run for student council. However, he didn't have enough confidence to do so. And then he ran into Satsuki. Apparently, the chain of her bike had come off, 
and like a true macho man, he helped her with that. To get even more comfortable, he asked her why she wanted to disband his small club, and it was simply because she wanted to use the school funds more effectively. However, he knew his protagonist could think differently, so he encouraged him to run for student president as if he did, he could have a chance of winning as opposed to letting his club disintegrate slowly. Not wanting to lose his friends, he went to see them, and everything was a mess. However, he gave them a motivational speech to prevent the club from dissolving. He wanted them to choose someone who could speak well, be a figurehead, and a true leader. He tried everything to persuade them to choose Chisato because she would be a good president, but they still chose him. Later in the afternoon, everyone went home, but before leaving, Chisato asked him for a chocolate bar. Apparently, it was delicious, but she didn't have the courage to try it. After a few days, YouTube was ready for the campaign, and even Yuki had submitted the papers to run as a candidate. However, they didn't know they would come this far, and they didn't know what to do now. That's why the teacher decided to help them. They needed to secure 10% of the votes, which, given the 6,000 students, amounted to 600 votes. Pretty straightforward. To assist them, there was Muri, the current student president, but he obviously wanted something in return. Not to lose against Satsuki, as it would be problematic to regain his power in the council afterward. Obviously, if Yuki won, they would both have equal power, and he chose him for a super simple reason. Several clubs were at risk of being closed down due to Satsuki's ideology, and if he supported them, they would have all the clubs on their side, the votes. However, they didn't know how to achieve this, so Mori explained to them how to do it. The first thing they needed to do was to have the support of the clubs, and Yuki would take care of that, but to achieve it, he would need to go with a pretty girl, so Chisato wanted to go with him. Also, they needed signatures, and for this too, it had to be pretty girls who asked for them so they were both surprised and pleased to do it. They set the plan in motion, and everything was going well, while the teacher went to meet with her sister. Since Satsuki was somewhat resentful, she thought her sister wanted to disband her club because of her, but it had nothing to do with it, as she wasn't mixing any family relationship with the professional one. However, she still wanted to be president and achieve everything the teacher couldn't accomplish during her time. Later in the afternoon, as Yuki was feeling a bit tired, they went to relax for a while, and to cheer him up, Chisato had some coins to buy something to drink. Then, just as Satsuki was passing by, she saw him on the way, so she went to see him. Instantly, she started teasing him by changing his name. Also, now that she was his enemy, she wished him good luck in the campaign. He was left speechless by her beauty. However, Chisato arrived instantly and felt somewhat jealous seeing our protagonist's reaction. And when she noticed he received a message from a girl, it made things even worse for her. In the evening, he went to buy some things for dinner and realized Mori was following him. He didn't know why, but oh well. Apparently, the message he received was from the teacher and he had gone to see her. He prepared some food for her. The toxic Chisato was keeping an eye on him. The teacher thought they were a couple but he instantly denied it. Also, he reminded him of the little incident that happened between them when the teacher was drunk. Apparently, it had started, and he told her that if it happened again, he wouldn't see her again. So, he promised not to do it again for that reason. Furthermore, as it was already nighttime, the teacher bid him farewell properly. The next day, he realized he had too much competition, but he wouldn't give up easily. Then, he stumbled upon a ladder and left Omi hanging. Obviously, he admired the view and then helped her down. He apologized for what had happened, and apparently, Omi was doing some maintenance work. As she was on a scholarship, she didn't want to waste time doing nothing, and Yuki realized that being on a scholarship was quite demanding. She had to study, and since she had two siblings, she had to make full use of the bus. You could also tell until some guys arrived and treated her badly for being on a scholarship. They said she stank, and Yuki wanted to complain, however, Aomi didn't want any more trouble, and she told him not to worry. But after being teased so much, she started to believe that she really smelled bad, so she asked her buddy to smell her. Being a good man, he did, and he was fascinated by her scent. He told her she smelled really good, and then he went to the club. There was a problem, they needed money for Yuki's campaign, and they couldn't use the club's money, as it wasn't legal to do so. They didn't know what to do, however, there was a fair coming up where they could raise funds, so they all proposed to sell the rolls that Yuki knew how to make. Apparently, they turned out great, 
but they were going to sell them cheaply, so Chisato would take care of raising the price a bit with a little surprise. Additionally, with the help of the teacher and 300 bars of Oboro, the whole campaign would be covered. Meanwhile, Yuki had gone to buy, and he ran into Satsuki. She was having some trouble with some members of a club, but as he already knew they were spending the club's money on food, they knew they couldn't compete with her. Right there, he met Yuki, and they started talking about his campaign. He knew Satsuki wanted to cut funds for the clubs, and he didn't know why. But Satsuki told him it wasn't just a matter of principles, there was something fishy going on. Furthermore, she told him she would be happy if he informed himself a bit more about the topic. Meanwhile, Aomi continued with her routine maintenance and began to admire Yuki. As she was located, they treated her super badly and made her tremble with fear. Meanwhile, Yuka was finding out what was really going on at school. The girls took Omi to give her a little beating. Later that night, the boys were on their way home and were surprised to find Omi searching through the trash. Since it was night, they wanted to help her, but she yelled at them not to. She told them not to worry. But as she continued with her work, she started crying, remembering what had happened. She didn't know what to do. Everything was ready for the campaign. He decided to help Yuki with his speech. To thank her, he confessed his feelings again and even asked her out, but she ended up rejecting him anyway. Chizato tried to cheer them up with some affection, and Mifuyu realized that she was in love with him. At first, she denied it completely, and Yuki also started teasing her. However, deep down, Mifuyu knew that they were both in love with each other. After a while, Yuki started to be more affectionate in the company of Mifuyu, and out of nowhere, a school reporter arrived. She wanted to ask him some questions about his campaign, but in a hurry, she ended up writing anything. To disturb the tranquility, Yuki came to seduce him, and even Nozomi, who wanted a piece of the action, but our protagonist reassured her by saying he would give her something later on. So, as Mifuyu saw that he was making an effort, she offered him some tea, and when she went to prepare it, the teacher walked in. Apparently, she was alone, and she showed him some affection, but Mifuyu came out just in time to ruin the moment for them. The teacher left somewhat embarrassed, and Mifuyu wanted to unite our protagonist with Chisato for their love story. She in that way, but she would still ensure his happiness. Fortunately for her, Omi arrived just then, and as she was a scholarship student, she had been assigned to his candidacy. That was done with all the scholarship students, but it was fate that they had just put her in charge of him. After a few days, the fair began, and everyone was ready to advertise our protagonist. They started handing out chocolate bars, and obviously, to get people to buy the expensive rolls they were selling, they had a perfect plan. The girls dressed up in cosplay to attract everyone's attention, and they could only take pictures if they bought our protagonists' roles. With that, everything was covered, and even with a somewhat weird club, they made a manga about Yuki with a burrow. Super disturbing. But to gain more popularity, he had to go along with it until things got too radical, and he had to refuse completely. It seemed they had done well, however, now all that was left was the final speech, and just then Mifuyu arrived to help him with that. She had everything prepared for him, so he just had to read it. However, minutes before the speech, Mifuyu noticed a small problem. Since she had Yuki's speech, and what he had was the love story Mifuyu was writing, and a protagonist hadn't even noticed anything. Then the weird guy with the mask came out and managed to sway some voters, making Satsuki look bad, saying that she was the one to blame for wanting to make some cuts in the club's income. With all this, now it was Satsuki's turn, and boy, she really went all out. Just saying that she drove everyone crazy with how beautiful she was. To conclude, now it was a protagonist's turn, and as she read her speech, they found it somewhat romantic. And the real speech turned out to be making a fool of himself. The next day, Morabai Club congratulated their protagonist for what he had achieved. However, not everything was rosy, as he had only passed the second phase. But when they showed him the difference in votes, he realized that he had barely made it through. That's when they told him that those votes weren't entirely accurate and showed him the true number of votes each participant had. Added together, they totaled 3,000, and since there were 6,000 students in the school, they knew that those extra 3,000 votes were blank votes. So, in the second round of voting, he had to make sure those blank votes went to him. The girls were enamored with Mori's intelligence, but since Yuki was only good at cooking, well. As our protagonist was used to cooking, he overheard them, 
and before he could complain, Aomi told him that he had a super talent, as she would like to cook with the person she loved so much in the future. Then, Yuki accidentally cut her finger, but there was Aomi, who with her nursing classes, stopped the bleeding with her tongue. With all the commotion, the girls realized it, and the most outraged was Chisato. But upon hearing Aomi explain this method to her little brothers, she remembered the exact moment when her little brother died in a car accident. Yuki noticed her, and when he saw her face he knew she was sad. After eating us, her daughter went to relax for a while, and out of nowhere Chisato arrives to take a bath with him. As disturbed as she was, she went for a walk for a while, and just ran into the teacher. They were arguing with Satsuki over family issues, and she apologized for overhearing. Since Satsuki got along well with him, she started bothering him, so to add a little toxicity, the teacher admitted to Satsuki that they had already kissed. It was without letting Yuki explain anything. After a while, they went to sleep, and Aburo shared a room with Yuki. With all the alarm clocks they had, he would wake up early in the morning. But if he didn't, he told Yuki to wake him up with a little kiss, to which Yuki obviously refused completely. To add to the tense atmosphere, Aburo slept with Yuki against his will, and even put him in a headlock to make him stay with him. However, with a stroke of luck, he managed to escape to go to the bathroom. On his way back, he ran into the teacher completely drunk again, so Yuki decided to take her to her room. Since they were at the lodging, the girls wanted to leave quickly, but to their misfortune, one of them encountered Yuki and mistook him for a peeping Tom. He tried to escape the horde of women who wanted to send him to St. Peter's, and with Satsuki's help, he managed to avoid the beating of his life. However, for having helped him, she asked for a bit of context. He told her that it was all because he was helping his sister, who was drunk, and out of curiosity, Satsuki also asked if they had kissed because of that. He clarified that the teacher. Since it was late, Yuki wanted to go back to his room, but Satsuki knew that the girls were still keeping watch, so she invited him to stay and play with her for a while. And folks, it got somewhat interesting, but it was just a game of G3. Satsuki played very well and humiliated Yuki, but since the girls were still watching, they only had three options. The first was to give up, which would be a disaster. The second was to decide to stay and live with her, and well, we know which one he'll choose. Or the third, which was to play a little more with her. Obviously, he chose the third. I'm not going to lie, the atmosphere got a bit heated, and Chatsuki wanted Yuki to kiss her to be on par with her sister. However, out of nowhere, she became serious. It seemed that the teacher had distanced herself from her family without reason, and even moved out of her house without saying anything. It left everyone feeling sad, especially her mother, so she asked Yuki if he knew anything about it, but unfortunately, he said he didn't know anything because he didn't have enough trust with the teacher. After a while, it seemed like all the girls were gone, so Yuki took the opportunity to leave. However, before leaving, Satsuki brought up the topic of the kiss, and she was about to kiss him. But there was the teacher to disturb them, as she realized that Satsuki felt something for him, and was about to kiss him, but she simply decided to mark her territory. With that, they left, unaware that the little Morris were watching them from afar. And the next day, everyone found out about the peeping Tom who had entered the girl's dorm and our guy played dumb. But at night, he didn't count on Satsuki seeing him. However, not completely. She only knew he had been with the teacher, not with Satsuki, so he just went along with it. She was super jealous and reminded him of what had happened in the bathtub. It was super obvious that Chisato was in love with him. However, Yuki told her that he would always be by her side, no matter what she wanted. She felt depressed hearing that response and left when she realized they were no longer alone. Later, Yuki met the teacher after taking a bath, and as usual, she was drunk, so he took the opportunity to ask her about her family. Since he never took her seriously, she didn't want to tell him anything. In fact, she confessed to him so that he would take her seriously now. Now he had to choose between her and her sister, so the teacher made it easier for her and called her sister to have a chess duel. If the teacher won, she would stay with Yuki, but if she lost, besides staying with Yuki, she would get what she left her family for. In the game, the teacher had complete control of the situation and almost minutes later she had won the game. However, to provoke Satsuki, she brought up the topic of her family. Obviously, this made her angry and it turned out they were half-sisters with the same father. But Satsuki didn't know the whole truth, so the teacher started telling her what had really happened. 
One day she had an accident, and since her blood type was rare, she was looking for a donor, but the catch was that her supposed mother didn't have the same blood type as Satsuki. Upon learning that she had lived her entire life with a false mother, she realized that she had spent her entire childhood with her, so literally she was her mother. It wasn't right until one day she passed away, and now Satsuki's mother was living with them. After a few years, Satsuki was born, and over time, the memory of her deceased mother was fading. The sadness she felt turned into hatred toward her family, and she didn't want to forgive her father for what he had done because if she did, her mother's memory would be lost. Upon hearing the whole story, Satsuki began to cry and apologize to her for hating her without reason. The next day, Jisato woke up helping to remember her brother, but anyway, she went to wake up Yuki because that day the main campaign began. At school, they went to print some flyers for the campaign and accidentally bumped into a girl who had apparently returned to school after some time. Since Yuki had been kind to her, Jisato became jealous, and from afar they saw Satsuki arguing with the teacher. It seemed that everything was because Satsuki had won the chess game, and the teacher took advantage of telling her story to hide her defeat because the prize of the game was Yuki. However, seeing that they were alone talking, Jisato arrived to interrupt them. And Satsuki, to worsen the situation, told me that they weren't talking about the campaign, but about some more private matters. After these events, Chisato was very upset with him, and he realized that something was also going on with the teacher. Feeling a bit down, he distanced himself for a while, and while watching some children play, he remembered his brother. The rat starts the campaign, and each candidate began to do their own thing to gain more support. However, in the distance, Yuki noticed that there were some girls bothering Omi. Knowing that they were treating her badly, he was about to send them packing, but that would be bad for the campaign. Chisoto went to stop him, and to save Omi, some guys from the school's public security department arrived and took care of them. However, Omi was still scared because she had previously had a small incident with a scholarship student. Apparently, the former head of the security department had leaked the name of a scholarship student, claiming she had committed a serious offense at school, but it was never proven. They started treating her badly, and it got to the point where she dropped out of school. Anyway, Aomi thanked Yuki for trying to help her, and a supporter decided to add another proposal to his candidacy, which was to support scholarship students so they wouldn't be intimidated by anyone. With this, he would support all scholarship students. However, Chisato was against it because it wasn't focusing on winning the presidency, but on helping Aomi. She was somewhat jealous, but she knew that with this new proposal, he could lose, and she told him that would never happen. Meanwhile, Mori was talking to the new girl, but she wasn't so new, as she was the one responsible for the small incident with a scholarship student. Since she had returned, she wanted to take control again, even wanted to control Yuki during his presidency, but Mori was against it. Meanwhile, Yuki was walking with the girls, and on the way, he ran into Mori. As he wanted to play his harmonica, Chisato became somewhat toxic because it would be an indirect kiss, and to avoid hearing her, Yuki ran off. However, she sent him packing. All of this brought tragic memories flooding back to Chisato, and she became so frightened that she started screaming. Memories from when they were both children kept resurfacing, and she remembered how she used to give him chocolate all the time because her little brother liked it. When he died, she held on to that memory, but one day Yuki refused to eat it, and Shizato started crying, fearing that he too would die like her brother. Yuki reassured her that he would always be by her side. At the hospital, Shizato was incredibly nervous, and they were surprised to find out that nothing had happened to our protagonist. However, Shizato was still traumatized. Rumors about the accident had spread, and that's why Satsuki had gone to look for him at the club. Worried, she asked what had happened, and they filled her in. Upon learning that Yuki was okay, she fainted from relief. When Yuki returned to the club to show evidence that he was fine, he realized that it was Chisato who was really upset. He even accompanied her home, and she didn't want to let go of his arm. She was so traumatized that Yuki had to break the ice to take a shower, and she got so angry at his attitude that she didn't know what to do. For a moment, Chisato went crazy and thought he would distance himself from her like her brother did. She even went to get some chocolate for him to eat, but Yuki decided not to play along anymore. He knew she was trying to replace her brother, and all the love she claimed to feel for him was just a facade to have the brother she never had. 
He even told her to eat the chocolate, but she started vomiting instantly, and as the atmosphere became uncomfortable, they each went to their own room. Just then, our protagonist bumped into Mori and remembered he had his harmonica. It had been fixed because it wasn't working, and he didn't know why Kana was written on the side. Mori immediately started playing a song and confessed that Kana was his best friend. He had enrolled in the school to look for her, but didn't know where she was. Just as they listened to the song, Mori arrived, recognizing it as one of Kana's. However, to change the subject, he asked about Chisato, and Yuki told him she had taken a few days off because she wasn't feeling well. Concerning the matter of supporting the scholarship students, Yuki knew this could jeopardize his chances of winning the elections, and despite his good intentions, he told Mori he would have to focus on winning the elections first. Later, as he had a medical checkup, our protagonist went to the hospital and noticed Ori there. Feeling curious, he decided to follow him, suspecting that Ori had something to do with Kana. He followed him to gather more information and stumbled upon her. It turned out Kana was in some kind of coma, and because he followed Ori, he was bombarded with questions to extract information. Since he didn't know much, they filled him in, explaining that the Department of Public Security couldn't always keep an eye on everyone. So they hired some spies called Agents S to gather information to prevent conflicts at school, and the agents assigned to Mori were Mori and Kana. However, as a significant amount of money was circulating within the school, things started to get murky. In December of last year, Kana began investigating, but they sent her to San Pedro and erased all the evidence she had. Since then, Kana had been in a coma, and they hid all the spies so that no one would find out anything. However, there was a small problem. The hospital where Kana was located belonged to the Katahira clan, with whom they didn't get along well. Initially, there was a request to accept her, which was to put Osaka, the new girl, in charge of the security department. Obviously, upon hearing this, Yuki felt somewhat indignant, but Mori had no other choice, as he didn't plan on abandoning Kana like Yuki had done with Chisato. Yuki was surprised because he didn't know how Mori had found out about that, and Mori already knew everything about them. It seemed cowardly on Yuki's part to abandon Chisato after promising to be with her. Moreover, he found it too hypocritical, as even when trying to court someone else, he thought of Chisato. He found it very mature of her, but he didn't plan on abandoning Kana. Meanwhile, Mifuyu went to visit Chisato and noticed that she had fought with Yuki. She tried to cheer her up, but stumbled upon a box full of chocolates. Just then, she also realized that she wanted to replace Yuki with her brother. As she angered her, Chisato began attacking her with the scar she had. She knew she was insecure about her body, and just to see how strong she was, she walked out into the street without shame. Chisato chased after her, and as she realized that Mifuyu had overcome her trauma, she promised to do the same. With all the context in mind, Mori brought up another issue. The finances of the security department. Almost all the funds were covering Kana's treatment, and that's why Mori had decided to support it to prevent investigations into their funds. However, the Katahira clan had instructed them not to support it. Nevertheless, Mori wasn't going to listen to them, and before she left, she informed everyone to stay alert. It was quite easy for her, being a spy, to locate Kana. She took her to be with her, and Maori, upon realizing this, became very serious and told our protagonist that if anything happened to Kana, he would regret it for life. Later on, Maori was happy to have found her after so long. Since Kana had taught her to play the harmonica, she started playing something for her while everyone was searching for her. However, upon hearing this sound, Kana gradually began to regain consciousness, and within minutes, she fully recovered her awareness. Seeing her, Mori started crying, and so did Maori. It seemed that everything was fine. Upon returning home, Chisato had a little surprise for Yuki. She ate a bit of the chocolate she hated so much, and that's how she began to overcome her trauma. As the campaign was coming to an end, our protagonist made his final efforts to rank among the top candidates. In the midst of it all, there was a surprising turn of events. A proposal from Chisato, which, with a little help, turned into a matrimonial ceremony. This made our protagonist realize that he had been in love with her since childhood, only he hadn't realized it. On their way home, being alone with Chisato, she asked him for a kiss, and they were about to share it when both received an electric shock. They were rendered unconscious, and Chisato was taken away. 
The next morning, those who had captured Chisato called Yuki and told him that if he wanted to see her again, he would have to do everything they said. They sent him to different locations to deliver information about his candidacy, instructing him not to tell anyone. Meanwhile, at school, there was concern for him as he hadn't shown up, and it was the last day for the final speech. Mifuyu called him to find out where he was, but he didn't say anything to protect Chisato. With a little help, they managed to postpone Yuki's speech, and Maori was also clueless about what had happened. On the other hand, Osamu went to the hospital to see if Connor remembered anything about her investigation, but Maori noticed from afar that he had a bad aura. Kana warned her not to say anything and played along until Yuzawa left. However, the problems persisted as someone had written something defamatory about their candidate, and now he had until noon to deliver his speech. If he didn't show up, everyone would think he had fled, but just then some schoolgirls stumbled upon him. Seeing him in a disheveled state, they alerted their peers, and with some deduction, Mori realized that something fishy was going on. They began searching for them while Ayuki kept him away from the school. It was all part of a plan to make them lose the elections, but Molly uncovered everything, disrupted the phone signal, told Yuki where Chisato was, and rushed to find her. Moreover, as all signs pointed to a member of the student council, they realized that the culprit was Osawa. It was also she who had run over Bakana, and with all this evidence, she was arrested. Later on, Yuki found Chisato, resembling the sleeping beauty, and was overjoyed to see her well. With a little help, he managed to make it to deliver his speech, and he was completely sincere. He stated his true intentions and how he wanted to help everyone, promising to do a good job. He captivated the students so much that he ended up winning the elections, and the students were proud of him. After a few days, as the new president, the council was extremely busy, but he still made time to be with Chisato, reminiscing about the old times. And what better way to celebrate than with a meal together?